showed me your unchanging love, and you showed me that the love does so much in my soul today and every day. It connects like the bond of the moon and the sun. You're the breeze. Connects like the bond of the moon and the sun. You're the breeze of the sea, the life abundantly for happiness. You show me joy. You show me. Well, good morning, Med Church. Good morning. Good morning, Gina. What's up? Hey, what's going on? Listen, she's back again. I'm back, um, y'all. You know, y'all know how Gina does. She does these disappearing acts on your boy. But it's <laughs> glad to have you uh, back with us for pre-service. Yes. Another opportunity to worship Jesus Christ. Yes. Wherever you are, you come on in. I'm Lordly Beard, and this is... Gina Wiley. Yeah. Are you yes. ready for worship? I am. And in my defense... I had good reason to be gone. I was sick, y'all. It wasn't COVID, thank God. Saying, you know you cannot say that. It was not COVID. I had a really, really bad sinus infection, uh, and I was out for the count. Yeah. But I feel so much better, yeah. and well, yeah. I'm glad to be back. It's glad. I'm, I'm glad to have you, sis. Yes. I know everybody else is out there is glad to have you. And I know everyone else is also glad to be able yes. to join us for another worship opportunity this morning yeah. at the Met Church. At the Met. Yes, it's, ma'am. It's almost like it's foreign to me because I was gone for yeah. so long. Look, Gina, I love the <laughs> Met. Y'all love your church. If you love your church, would you do us a favor? Y'all know we're going to do it, how we do it. Go ahead yeah. and drop uh, some fire emojis. If you love the Met Church, <laughs> Drop a fire emoji on, yeah. in the comments this morning. I love my church, Gina. Man. Yeah, yeah. I love it, too. Yeah. I'm so glad to be back. Seriously. Yeah. And you know what? The thing I love about my church is my church loves me. 
And yes. our church loves you as well. If you have any prayer requests, we want you to be sure to make sure that you drop those in the comments this morning. Also, if you have a prayer request that you would like uh, to be sent directly to us, you can also use um, uh, the opportunity to email us via uh, Metropolitan info at metropolitanbc.org. Yeah. I'm saying Gina's lines, y'all. So Yeah. <laughs> and you can also send a message directly to us on Facebook That's if right. you want a prayer yeah, request. Yeah, we get tons and tons of people who send prayer requests through Facebook. Yeah. Um, and you know, the beautiful thing about it is our pastor himself um, takes the time to pray over every last one of the uh, prayer requests that comes in. We as a staff take the time to, to pray over those yeah. prayer requests. So please, whatever it is that you need, we know the climate that we're in. And we want to make sure that we are covering. And you know what's exciting, Gina, is that the Met Church is doing uh, prayer in a special way. Lent's coming. Yeah. Yeah. So Lent is coming up uh, February 17th. Yeah. You do not want to miss the opportunity to meet us here in the building at the Med Church. You can schedule an opportunity to come in and pray here at the altar. We know that this is sacred space and we honor God's presence in this place. So we're inviting the Med Church to come in, um, take some time. You can schedule in advance to come in and pray uh, whatever it is that you are going to be praying for and praying about during the Lent season while yeah. we're fasting and praying we are making the church available just for you so be sure to look up, look out for that for more details yeah I think that is such an amazing opportunity yes, for our members to be able yes, to do that especially those who are not a part of this dream team and yeah. can't come on a on yeah. a normal day like yeah. we will be able to come so that is amazing I'm really looking forward to that yeah people People miss the Met. Yeah. They miss being here. And we're just grateful that we get to bring the Met to your homes. And speaking of, if this is your very first time worshiping with us this yes. morning, if you're joining us for the very first time, you can type the word new, new in the comments. And I'm telling you what's about to happen. You want to know what's about to happen? I'm going to tell you anyways. <laughs> People are about to flood, flood, flood your comment in response to welcome you here. We actually practice something here at the Med Church called holy hospitality. And what that means is that we go over and beyond. We go out of our way even to make sure that we met, that every person that encounters yeah. the, the love movement here at the Met actually gets an opportunity to experience it by a nice welcome, a warm welcome, and being greeted. And so if you're new, type the word new. You can also yeah. text the word new. You can text the word new to 918. 303-7009 and we will be sure to greet you there as well yeah we can't give you a hug in the mug but we can flood you with the comments hey, you we know can what? give you virtual hugs last week i gave away a love is t-shirt yeah plug the t-shirt speaking of um you know if you are new um we want to make sure that you know that we have a special way during this amazing worship service series that we're doing uh we have a special way of making sure that people can rep the met and rep the sermon yeah. series that we're in so we have love is shirts that are available you can purchase those online uh via our website um to purchase your shirt Listen, these shirts are completely dope. They are designed they are. by us um, here at the stat. I mean, at the Met, and so like literally, this is customized gear for our Met members. And I mean, listen, you gotta get a yeah. shirt because it's a really nice shirt. Yeah, and that yellow is bomb. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like the yellow. I got one for you. Okay. You know, I take care of it. Thank you. Yeah, I got your <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So speaking of holding it down, I have yep. to shout out. You know, I love shouting people out. So I have to shout out Miss Tangie for holding it down Yo. for the last couple of weeks. Listen, man. That's my girl. You know, I told her, I was like, listen, Gina is all about the dream team. That's yes. what Gina talks about all the time, <laughs> y'all. And so it was good to bring her into our space. Yeah. Allowed her to spend some time. She volunteered. She was a brave, brave soul. Yeah. And so we're super grateful for uh uh, Miss Tangie, shout out to you. Yeah. And while we're doing shout outs, we're not going to let another shout out pass by. This one right here. Happy birthday, Gina. Thank you. Happy birthday to you. Listen, y'all go ahead, comment. Happy birthday to Gina. We want to cover her with love. Uh, that's what we do here at the Met Church. Yeah. You know, we're all about birthdays. So, Good and if it's your birthday uh, here at the Met Church, we want to wish you a very happy birthday as well. And if you have a birthday coming up in February, yes. just be expecting to be 
what is that word when uh, serenaded? There it is. <laughs> be expected to be serenaded. Yeah, I got a little special one Sweet. that has a birthday in February. Oh, no. Good well, stuff. Yeah, Carson is turning three. What? Yes, okay. my little baby, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so I'm going to allow Gina to tell you all um, what else is happening here at the Met Church, um, how you can stay connected, and as well as, Gina, can you tell us how we can give this morning? Y'all know I got that. So there are four ways that you can give. The yeah. first being our cash app option. That is dollar sign, Met Church Tulsa. Also, you can mail your givings to the church directly at 1228 West Apache. Yeah. You can also go directly to the church's website. Click that drop down give. And last, you can do text to give at 918-205-9959. That's right. There are four ways to give. Let me tell you, I have an amazing story about um, a young lady who's been watching the Met Church for actually for a few years. She lives in Oklahoma City. She's from here in Tulsa, um, but she's been watching the Met Church for years. Um, and she um, reached out to me about a week ago and said that she was prepared to gift her tithe and offering here at the Met Church. Um, and since then, I've con contacted her. We've talked again. And I mean, y'all, like the amount of um, just excitement that she has to be a part of what's happening um, here at the Met Church in a financial way. Um, she's just super excited. So I aspire um, to be just like her um, in that same, have that same heart posture. Yeah. You know, Pastor Mert uh, preached about having a heart check. And I mean, when I spoke with her, um, I was I was reminded about, you know, what Mert uh, preached to us about in the in the response to what happens in our life and what we go through and like where our heart is in those moments. And so, yeah, shout out to her. She knows yes, who she is. is. Awesome. I won't throw her name out there, but she's amazing. And I'm telling you, it just really did bless me to uh, be able to just converse with her about her um, experience with giving here at the Met Church. That is awesome. So we have a couple of things coming up. Black History Month is coming up. Yeah. And we, we take it. We list. Yes. You know, we do Black History, History Month is serious at the Met. And one of my yeah. favorite things is the Met moment in history. Mine as well. So with that being said, even though we're doing virtual service, we're still going to continue with that. That's right. Yep. You can expect youth and children to yeah. still do their part um, every year during the month of Black History Month in February. Our kids go out of their way to just make sure that they too have an opportunity to uh, yeah. participate in worship and honoring the legacies and the um, the history that we have as a people. Um, yeah. And so yeah, the Met Church is all about it and I'm excited about it as well. I'm excited too and of yeah. course, we'll, we'll be continuing our sermon series. Love, Love is. is. Love. Let me tell you, this series was right on time yeah, for me yeah. like to be transparent the first two weeks of the year have not been the greatest yeah. but this series is a reminder of like the the, the different capacities that yeah. love can come in and so like I've experienced that from people all around me and it's been amazing so yeah this sermon series was right on time wow. That's beautiful. Yes. Yeah, I too am really thankful for this series, um, you know, and just again, checking me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <laughs> super thankful. And we hope that you are thankful for this opportunity to to log in and take part in this amazing uh, sermon series, Love Is. So that said, yes. are y'all ready for worship? It's time for worship, Are you ready for worship? I'm ready. You ready to lift your hands? Yes, sir. Are you ready to wave your hands while you're at the uh, couch, wherever you are? Wherever you are. Listen, we're about to count down to worship in... <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. Join us Sunday, February 7th for Go Red Sunday as we do our part to encourage and adopt heart healthy behaviors together. That's right. Let's go red on Sunday, February 7th. Rock your red. Wherever you are, take a selfie and check in or tag the Met Church. It's Go Red Sunday. And it's time for our State of the Met annual business meeting, Tuesday, February 9th at 7 p.m. You must go to our website and register to receive the Zoom link for this virtual meeting. In the meantime, you can pick up a copy of this year's annual budget at the Met Church. It's time for State of the Met. Also, join us for our annual Easter production auditions. That's right, we're having virtual auditions on Monday, February 1st at 7 p.m. For more information, email mertonhuff at metropolitanbc.org. Well, 
Good morning, Mid Church. Hey, happy Sunday to you. We are so excited about another opportunity to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Anybody excited to worship Jesus this morning? Come on, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. This is our opportunity to exalt his name together. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout he's a great, great God. His name is great and he is greatly to be praised. Father God, we thank you and we love you this morning. We just take the time, God, to rest in you because you've been so good and so faithful. When we look back over everything that we've been through, God, it's only been you who've brought us this far. So we say thank you. We thank you for what you're going to do in this service. And we just want to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, someone shout hallelujah Hallelujah. and amen. Come on, somebody say your great name. Come on, your great name. Hallelujah. We exalt your great name, oh God. Come on, clap.
<laughs> oh, there's power in his name. There's healing in his name. There's deliverance in his name. There's victory in his name. There's healing. that your name is great your name is great and greatly to be praised from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same sun God we we give you glory this morning glory glory oh we give you glory this morning so I don't know about you Met Church but I'm ready to lift up my hands surrender and pray to the God who is great and he's got the whole world in his hands this morning so come on wherever your preferred posture of prayer is whether that's at the couch whether that's at the dining room table while you're eating your breakfast we invite you right now to join us in this moment of prayer this moment of worship and gratitude to our God who is sovereign and in control come on let's call his name Let's call his name in prayer, amen. Everything must change. The Bible says this, that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. That means everything must change because there's power. There's power. Wonder working power. In the name of Jesus. Let us pray. Almost oh, gracious and eternal Father God. Thine, O oh Lord, is the glory and the majesty and the victory and the power. For, Lord, everything that is in the heaven and the earth is thine, O oh Lord. Lord, we thank you this morning for the victory that is ours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that while we were still burdened by the bondage of our sin, you looked down from your heavenly throne and you thought we were all worth saving. And, Lord, we are so grateful that even though we still fall short of your glory, that you continue to keep us. Yeah in your safety, in your divine presence, and in your protection. Lord, if we ever needed your presence before, we need you now. If we ever needed your protection before, Lord, we sure do need you now. If we ever needed you to show up and show out in our world, we sure do need you right now. As we continue to witness the number of fatalities rise due to this pandemic, we lift up everyone who's been affected by the virus, those who have lost loved ones, those who have lost their lives, God. We lift them up to you right now and ask that you to comfort them, God. Lord, as we continue to fight for social justice and seek a peaceful resolution to the division that has overtaken our cities, that is running rampant through our states and our nation, we pray for peace, God. Peace to rain down and fill the hearts of your people, God. We lift up those who are on the front lines of, of each and every battlefield. We re and we remain confident, God, and assured. God, we are confident and assured as we allow you to lead, guide, protect, and direct us that we already have the victory over all the things that we are struggling with. For as your word assured us, assures us, the battle isn't even ours. It is the Lord's. And we know that the God that we serve, yeah, yeah. the God that we serve is undefeated in battle. Lord, watch over and keep our children, God, as the education process continues to be an ever-changing ever challenging venture we ask that you cover strengthen and encourage all those who have an impact on our children teachers administrators all the workers God Lord we come to you today God coming boldly to your throne of grace and mercy in our time of need God for you said we can cast all our cares upon you because you truly do care for us Father God so we come to you God laying down all our burdens all our cares God and we leave them at this altar today God with the one who can handle all our problems, the one 
who says your yoke is light and your burden is easy, God. So we leave it with you right now, God. Heal today, God. Save to God today, God. Live, deliver today, God. Father God, we lift up the pastor of this house and this family. We pray for all the leaders of this church and churches everywhere. Lord, we, re we rebuke any attempt of the enemy to steal, kill, and destroy our joy, our peace, and our faith. In Jesus' name, we say every attack of the enemy right now must cease. In Jesus' name, we counsel every attempt of the enemy to attack your kingdom right now in Jesus' name. And we lose your spirit of love into the atmosphere right now. Show us through this sermon series how to love as you have loved, God. Show us how to love one another, God, to esteem others above ourselves, God, that we might love like you love. We thank you and we praise you for that love, God. We thank you for keeping us, God, through these times, God. We thank you for blessing us, God. We thank you for watching over us and keeping and doing our, as we do our best, God, to trust you with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding. Give us strength to continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Give us strength to continue to fight the good fight of faith as we go on this journey, God. And we'll be ever mindful to give your name all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. And it's in the matchless and marvelous name of the one we love, the one who died for our sins in the name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Give thanks and ask it all. Let the church say amen. Say amen again. Say hallelujah. And amen. Come on, let's give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Oh, give him glory. Give him glory. Come on, somebody bless the name of the Lord. Come on, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Salvation is in the name of Jesus. Favor in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We love you, we love you. We know there's power in his name. And this song simply says your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. Can anybody declare God? He'll do it again. He's the same God. I've seen him move mountains. And I believe I'll see him do it again. Come on, come on.
different way. They said he'll do it again, but they said he'll do it again. He'll do it again. Just take a look at where you are now and where you have been. Hasn't God always come through for you? He's the same now as then. Don't you know God has not changed? You may not know how, uh, you may not know when, but he'll do it again. You may not know how, you may not know when, uh, but he'll do it again. Oh, 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 you may not know how, you may not know when, but he'll do it again first thing Paul says about love is love is patient of all the ways that you describe love why Paul is patience at the top of the list some of us say, I, I, I can be patient if I can see how much time it's going to take. If I can see the situation through the hourglass, uh, then uh, I know that all I have to do is just wait until all the sand empties out. Flip the scripts and look at love through the lens of the God who waited so patiently for me. We are moved from grief to gratitude because we realize that God did not put his love for us on a timeline, in an hourglass. God let the timeline, the hourglass, lay on its side. God did not hold our hourglass to our head and say, when this sand runs out, my love runs out. Hey there, good morning, Met Church everywhere. 
we greet you in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ on this incredible Sunday morning I agree with the praise team today I know that my God is able to do it again somebody out there you're waiting for God to do it for you I want you to know what he's done for others he'll do the same thing for you same God then same God now this week I've heard about seven or eight people learning that they have the COVID virus and you know my message to them was it was God healed me and God will heal you same God then same God now he will do it again you ought to go ahead and put it that in the comments right there do it again God heal cancer do it again God lift up a downtrodden people do it again God men broken hearts do it again God yes come on I don't know about you but I'm ready to give my God some good praise God has been good to me he just keeps on blessing me over and over again we're in an exciting time an exciting time in our nation we have a brand new administration in the White House and I've said this before and I'll say it again I still believe that we have to keep our faith in Jesus you might like Joe in the White House but you know what I love Jesus on the throne I'm praying for Kamala in the VP position excited about the history making move that she has made but I still put my faith in Jesus the one who sits high and, and looks and lives and reaches low but we pray we pray for all our leaders all of those who are in elected uh, office public office uh, whether they are Republican or Democrat or independent we give them our respect and honor for the office that they hold and we pray for them in the spirit of love the spirit of love that we are preaching about in these early weeks and months of the year 2020 so you know what to do get out your Bible get your love is journal get your pen out I need you to be taking notes I hope that you have been exercising patience in these last few days catching yourself and exhibiting the patience that comes out of the love that God calls us all to share in this world as you're making your way to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I just want to take a moment to thank God for our very own Reverend Brother Merton Huff, who reminded us that we need to get a heart check. Check your heart. I hope you've been checking your heart to make sure that you don't have a heart of stone, but that you have a heart of flesh. A heart of flesh that's able to absorb and also uh, extend the love that we're preaching and teaching about in this season. All right, by now you should have made it to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let us look at verse 4. If you don't mind, I just want to pick that text apart a bit. I want to pull out the point that is our focus today and recite just these three words. Love is kind. That is both our title and our text today. Love is kind. Are you ready for God's word? Come on, let me share with you a little story. When I was, when I was a kid, there was this weird ritual. There was this weird ritual that we would use. We would use to figure out whether or not the one that we loved loved us back oh don't act like I'm the only one who had some anxiety about approaching somebody that I thought I loved back in the day I'm talking about that puppy love but if you thought you loved a girl or you thought you loved a boy one of the things that you could do was you would take a flower 
You take a flower with petals and you use the petals on the flower to help you determine if the one you loved <laughs> loved you too. We would go, she loves me, she loves me not. She loves me, and then you'd have to keep on pulling, she loves me not. As many petals as there were, you'd pull them off, she loves me, or she loves me not. Dion, I have to tell you, this is how I determined whether or not to ask you out on that first date. I said, that girl, Dion, she loves me, she loves me not. And in fact, I think, Dion, I cheated on you. I saw that I was going to end up on she loves me not. So I only pulled half of the pedal and I said, she loves me not. And I left a little piece for she loves me. And that's why we had dinner at that Mexican restaurant that night because the flower petals told me that girl loves you, Ray. Silly ritual, but for many of us, that's how we determined. Does she love me or she loves me not? There was another ritual, another weird thing, probably as silly, if not more silly, uh, than the flower ritual. And that was the traditional love note. In the fifth grade, I had my eye on a girl named Jackie. Jackie was on the track team. Jackie set three seats over for me, but I wanted to ask her to be my girl. Fifth grade now. And then uh, I went to a friend and said, hey, I want to talk to Jackie, but I don't know if she is going to like me. And so my friend said, this is what you need to do. I know you scared to step to her like that. What you need to do, Ray, is write her a love letter and let her respond to whether or not as to whether or not she loves you or loves you not you see I tried the flower petal thing but every flower I used gave me a different answer I didn't know if Jackie was gonna love me back or love me not and so my friend said you gotta write her a letter and you stick it in her desk and she will write you back and let you know what her answer is and my friend he was smart he was one of the smartest kids in the class so I believed what Daniel said and I got out my pen brother Merton I wrote her a letter I said dear Jackie this is Ray Ray who is in your class I want to know Jackie do you love me or do you not? And then at the bottom of the letter, Sister Robin, I put two little boxes for her to check. There was box number one. And next to it, I said, it said, yes, I love you. And then there was box number two. And next to it, I said, it said, no, I don't love you. And then I asked Jackie at the bottom of the letter, please, check yes for I love you or no for I don't and then uh, when you can put the letter back in my desk so I put the letter in her desk at right before recess and I know that at recess she was gonna get the letter and she took the letter and we were out there playing doing what we do we played kickball and we played baseball and we ran around the track and all the things kids do during recess but the whole time I was nervous as I could be because all I could think about was what Jackie was going to put in the letter that I had sent to her well recess ended and we all lined up and I went back into the class and sat in my desk first thing I did I looked down there brother Eric was my letter I said, oh, sooky, sooky now. Jackie has responded to me. And I just felt like Jackie was going to love me. Well, who couldn't love me? So I thought at that time. Well, I knew I couldn't look at the letter during class because y'all may not understand this, but I grew up in an old school school with some old school teachers and some old school values. And my fifth grade teacher, her name 
was Miss Ross. You've heard me talk about Miss Ross every now and then. She was one of those teachers who would look at you over the top of her glasses. I don't know why she wore glasses because most of the time she looked over the top of them. And when she looked at you over the top of those glasses, that meant you better get in line. And she did not allow you to read letters and love notes in the class. In fact, had she caught me reading that love note, she would have taken it out of my hand and read it before the whole class and shamed me in my fifth grade classroom. So I did what was the smart thing to do. I waited until lunchtime. And when that lunch bell rang, the Lord, you should have seen my face. I wasn't hungry. I didn't want no chicken nuggets. I didn't want chocolate milk. It didn't matter that they were serving fresh peaches. No, all I wanted to do was open my letter because Jackie was about to express her love for me. So there it was. The letter was in my hand. I took the envelope, opened it, pulled it out of the envelope. I began to read Jackie's response to me. And you know, my eyes were only focused on the box that would have the check telling me, do you love me? Or do you love me not? I looked at the letter right there. It was right there in front of me. I saw the check by the box, in the box that said, yes, I love you. But I was shocked. I was stunned. Frankly, I was confused. Because the other box, no, I don't love you. Jackie put a check in that box too. Girl, what are you trying to say to me? I am so confused. I am so traumatized. This girl then took my letter and checked both boxes. Yes, I love you. No, I do not. I did not know whether to go hug her or check her. I didn't know whether to smile at her or look at her with a side eye. Can I tell you the truth? I'm going to tell you something that is just as true as the day is long. That was in the fifth grade. It was in the springtime. Now Jackie and I went to school all of our lives. We went to the same elementary school the same middle school and the same high school we graduated on the same day in 1978 May of 78 do you know I never asked her which check she meant and do you know she never said anything to me about this letter to this very day it's kind of an example of the way that love can be such a confusing thing. I don't know what the girl meant, but I do know this. I know that too many people, young and old, are confused about this thing called love. We don't know if the people we really love actually love us back. We don't know. There are a lot of kids, a lot of kids I talk to who don't know whether their parents still love them because they've done some horrible thing. That's because they're not completely sure what love is. Too many people are living with a warped idea of what love is. And some people think love uh, can be counted by how many times you call me today. Some people think love is all about whether or not you text me right back or do you wait for some time to text me back. Some people are, are so uh, confused about what love is that they uh, judge the love of their boo by whether or not that person put a heart on the picture that you posted on IG today. Some people think love is all about whether or not he pays the bill. Somebody say, ain't nothing going on here but the rent. You love me? Then help pay some of these bills. 
Well, let me suggest today, let me suggest today that the only way to know what love is, is you got to go back to the source. I need somebody to go ahead and put that in the comments. Put that in your love journal. If you want to know what love is, you must go back to the source. What is the source? God is love. So today, today, let's push forward. Push forward in our study and as we examine the passage that says to us today, love is kind. We know now that love is patient and we're working on that. I hope you're working on it. I'm certainly working on it in my own life. But today, I want to unpack the meaning of this phrase, love is kind. And I think the best way, the best way, church, to approach this issue, the best way to approach this subject is to actually peel apart or peel back the layers of the meaning of this word as Paul uses it in this text when he says that love is kind because the Greek word for kind that uh, is translated as kind in our English language is a word that has rich connotations, rich connotations that can only be seen when you peel back the layers and you derive uh, the meaning from the original uh, language that word uh, it's a complicated word I don't ask you to remember it I'm gonna say it just one time the transliteration of it is crest to Omal crest to Omal it literally means to be kind loving and underline this one because I'm gonna unpack this merciful but the root of the word <laughs> I said it had a lot of rich meaning I'm going to show you something here today can I can I teach metropolitan can I can I bring my voice down and just just teach for a little while today uh, well I'm going to do it anyway because the Lord has given me something to share with you that I think is life changing if you get this word you will be a better person you will be a better parent you will be a better friend you'll be a, a better spouse so come on let's learn the word of God the root of the word uh, in this text translated as kind also refers to a wine I'm talking about wine yeah like the beverage you know like the one you drink it refers to a wine that is well aged and I want to tap into the connection uh, between a well-aged wine and this word that the Bible is using or translates in English as kind. Love is like a well-aged wine. Now before you go get drunk, hold on, hold on now. You know, check yourself before you wreck yourself, okay? Let, let, let pastor explain. The word for kind also comes from this word that means a good wine, not just a good wine, it's a wine that is aged. And think about, think about the qualities, the qualities that are associated with a wine that's aged. You know, there's some things that you want young. I know a lot of y'all, y'all want your fashion to be young. You want your uh, boo to be young. You want your clothes to be young. But one of the things you want to be old is your wine. Because old wine, aged wine, is better than new wine. It's better than uh, wine that hasn't been around very long. You've heard the saying that wine gets better with age. Well, it, it, it's true. I'm, I'm, I'm a witness, right? The cliche, though, comes from the fact that when wine is allowed to age, it loses its acidic edge. It's not so bitter. <laughs> it's not so, uh, doesn't have that, 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 that bite that makes you wince when you, when you drink it. You know, you drink something, you say, mm. you know, some of y'all do that. Some of y'all, whatever you drank last night, had you going, mm. no. Aged wine doesn't make you squint your face like that. Mm -mm. 
some of y'all need to stop squinting your face. You need to upgrade your wine. But that's another story. So when you let wine age, it loses that abrasive flavor. Some of you know what I'm talking about from your own personal experience. Come on in here. Lean on in. You know I'm talking to you. If you ever drank MD 2020, you know what I'm talking about. That's why they call it Mad Dog. Drink enough of it and you start acting like a what? A mad dog. An aged wine is not abrasive. An aged wine is mellow. If you follow the logic of this lexicon, you will see how this meaning con connects to what it means to be kind. Think about this. People who are kind are people who are not abrasive. They know how to say something hard and it comes across in a kind way. People who are kind, even when they are in conflict, they know how to keep it mellow. People who are kind offer constructive criticism and even ne necessary correction, but they still can be smooth about it. Have you ever had somebody uh, who almost kind of on the down low cussed you out, but uh, you felt good about it when they finished? Because they knew how to say it in a way that you could receive it. That's what kindness looks like. That's why it's sometimes compared to an aged wine, kindness has a smoothness about it. And church, that's what God is calling us to be. We're called to be the kind of people who are smooth and, and who are not abrasive, uh, who don't have that uh, acidic edge. We don't rub people the wrong way, even if we have to have a difficult conversation. Can I testify today? I just want to share with you today that I'm working on this in my own life. I, it's something I'm still working on. Don't judge me and I won't judge you. I'll tell you, I, some years ago, I had a frat brother for a little while. We were, we were roommates, but we were also friends uh, for life. And, and um, every now and then we'd get into arguments or we'd be in frat meeting and I would, you know, uh, have something to say that may come across as kind of contentious. And, and he used to stop me sometimes. He said, Ray, you need to watch your tone. I said, watch my tone? What's wrong with my tone? I'm just talking. No, but that's just it. You, it's, it's the way, it's not, it's not what you say, it's, it's how you say it sometimes. And, and I, I, I didn't get it, and I kind of blew him off. We were boys, and you know, I was like, you do you, I do me, hey. You go watch your own tone. Well, then I got married. I've been married to Dion, you know, 28 years now. And, and a few years ago, when we were kind of in, in a, a tense conversation, kind of going back and forth, she said what she wanted to say. I said what I want to say. And we going back and forth, you know, just like you do uh, in marriage. And one time she stopped me. She said, ah, uh, I'm going to need you to watch your tone. I said, tone? You don't even know my frat brother. What, 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 what is this talk? What, what's going on? Why? What, what's, what's wrong with my tone? She said, it's not what you say sometimes, right? It's the way you say it. I'm like, wow, okay, that's just a coincidence that my frat brother said it and my wife uh, has said it. And then a couple of years ago, I was on the phone with Jordan and I was mad at her and I had reason to be mad at her. She, done, she did something she had no business doing and I let her have it. I think I've even told this story. I got on her case. I told her what she needed to do. I went off on her and uh, told her she better get herself together. And if she didn't get herself together, I was going to come down to Prairie View A&M University. I was going to take that car from her and leave it here. And she was going to walk for wherever she was going to wherever she needed to be because uh, I wasn't going to take it anymore. And at the end of the conversation she started crying and I hate when they do that. Now she knows she was wrong. I don't know why she was crying. She started, oh, daddy I don't want to talk no more. She hung up on me. I started to call her back. I didn't call her back. I said well, you know, I don't want to talk to her either. Well, the next day I think we both kind of felt some kind of way and realized we needed to talk. We were on the phone, me and Jordan. She said, dad, I know I was wrong. And I know what you were telling me was right but dad that tone it hurt me and I wish you would talk to me differently I said uh oh three different people three different settings all say to me maybe you ought to check your tone 
And I just have this f- philosophy in life. I always feel like if different folk in different parts of your life tell you the same thing, you ought to listen. And I realized something about myself. When I get agitated, huh? I don't know, maybe even my staff has noticed this, but if y'all, you know, have y'all noticed? See, they out there saying amen. When I get agitated, I have a little edge in my speech. Lord, forgive me. I'm trying. I'm working on I'm doing the best that I can. I know some of you will be surprised when I tell you this, but your pastor can be snarky sometimes. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do better. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me, church. And so uh, you need to do what I've been doing and get your pen and paper out. And let me just bless you, bless you with three truths that love requires. We've already unpacked the meaning of patience. Today I want to unpack for you the meaning of kindness because sometimes even when I don't realize I'm not being kind to my friends, to my wife, to my kids, and I guess according to them, to some of the people who work for me. And I really do want to be better. So here's what I have to share with you. The first thing you need to know, and this is going to be hard to hear, is that kindness is universal. Kindness is universal. What do I mean by that? It's for everybody. It's the behavior you as a Christian are called to show toward all people, the white people and the black people, the tall ones and the short ones, the Christian ones and the atheist ones, all people. Kindness is universal. That's what Paul is trying to get these Corinthians to get in this text. You see, they have formed their own factions. They've formed all these diverse groups. One group says, no, we the people, we follow Paul. The other group says, no, we down with Apollos. The other group says, we don't roll with anybody. We just rolled with ourselves. We get down with who we want to get down with. And all of them are fighting among themselves. And when Paul begins to teach them on the meaning of love, Paul is intentional about calling them out and asking them to understand love as kind. But it's a kindness, Paul is trying to tell them, that's not reserved for the people you get down with. It's a kindness that is actually intended to be shared with the people you don't like, with the people you don't roll with, with the people who don't think like you or look like you or act like you. In fact, The kindness that the Bible teaches us to use is actually targeted at the people who are unkind. He calls them out. In the beginning of the letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and 10, he talks about the divisions that are existing uh, among them. And when he talks about kindness, he's telling them, you are supposed to be be kind to the people with whom you are, from whom you are divided. The people who are unkind with you. Some of you, you understand this. You got some folks you can't stand. You got some people who you have done you wrong. I want you to think about that person who messed you up, who messed over you, and you refused to call. You know who I'm talking about. You got some folks who still owe you money and they walk by you like they don't even see you. You got somebody who slept with your boo. You got some folk that you feel disconnected from. Guess what? The kindness that is from the love of God is a kindness that says you got to get with that person. You got to show that kindness to that person. And here's what Paul is saying to you what you ought to do about it. You ought to love them and in case you don't know what love is, read the text. He says love is kind. When Paul calls on all Christians to show love through kindness, he's emphasizing the need to be kind to those who have not been kind to you. That's kindness is as it is described in this text. In fact, among the connotations connected uh, to this work in the original language, uh, the connotations connected to this word in the original language are these three ideas. It says that kindness is a love that includes grace, mercy, 
and forgiveness. All of those things are rolled up into this one word, kindness. All of those words are embedded, embedded and embodied in the word that you see in the Bible at 1 Corinthians 13 and 4. Love is kind. Kindness is an action uh, that is actually uh, exhibiting mercy. It is something you give to someone not because they deserve it, because uh, it is something that they need. God is saying to us today, church, you ain't doing nothing special when you're kind to somebody you like. You don't get no badge for that. God is saying he's not impressed when you are kind to somebody who's been kind to you. You don't get any points for that. If you want to live out this text, if you want to live out this text, then you are forced to take your kindness over there to somebody who does not deserve it. If you want to live out this text, if you want to be a Christian in your heart, then you've got to take your kindness to somebody who has done you wrong. If you want to live this text, you must show kindness to somebody who refuses to show it to you. You want to live by the word of God? You must take kindness to the place, to the place where it's hard to show it, where it doesn't come easy or natural for you because kindness is universal. But let me add today that kindness is also what we call actionable. Somebody get that word. Kindness is actionable. I told you that this word kind has lots of rich connotations that make it make its meaning incredibly multi-layered and when you pull back those layers you will also find that this word kind can mean useful the word kindness is literally translated as to be useful or helpful maybe a better way to articulate what I'm trying to say here is to say that kindness must be a useful or helpful action kindness is universal kindness is actionable and let me close out if you'll be patient with me by saying kindness is transformational what Paul knows when Paul describes when Paul describes love as kind is that lo a loving kindness can change the heart of a person who is unkind. Kindness is a transformational in that when you use it, you can literally change the disposition of somebody who's been disagreeable. The reason Paul charges these people with the task of showing kindness to people who are cantankerous, nasty, and downright uh, mean is that he is calling Christians to a higher moral vision. It's kind of what Michelle Obama means when she tells us when they go low, you go high. You don't let unkind people make you act in unkind ways. That only adds to the level of, of unkindness and perpetuates uh, unkindness in our world. Rather, what Paul is getting at, church, in this text, is our opportunity to transform the world and transform other people by responding to its unkindness with God's loving kindness. I want to share a story with you and then I want to close this out today. I think some of you remember four or five years ago, um, I went to a family reunion in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, this was kind of my extended family. It included all of my siblings, my, my mother, uh, who is the matriarch of our family. My siblings, some of them are already great-grandparents, and so we had several generations, five, I think, generations included. We had an amazing time eating and dancing and joking. I met some of my little great grand nieces and nephews whose names I can't pronounce and, and don't remember but it was good to see them because they look like me and they look like us. I took my kids out there and we had an amazing amazing time. Well 
we culminated the family reunion by having a brunch a brunch at a huge restaurant and we're in Las Vegas now so the restaurant is in the casino it's a nice casino it's off the beaten path it's not on the strip it was luxurious and and comfortable and had great seating and it was one of those all you can eat buffets right and so there we are uh, some of us came early some of us came on time and well you know some of my family came late but we are family and we strolled in there in various groups and you have to understand uh, while we were sitting there I think some of the uh, waiters were getting a little annoyed with us because we had a lot going on we got some with a baby on uh, her hip and one uh, in our hand but but this is my family right and you have to understand my family is diverse there, there are a lot of us there we, we, we got all kinds and but all of us trace our roots to to both Austin and or Compton I told you I'm straight out of Compton right and so a lot of my Compton cousins were represented because that's not very far from Las Vegas and they brought Compton with them some of them still got a little street in them and don't you say nothing because that's my family some of us speak standard English and and some of us speak a little ebonics, but, but that's my family. Some of us are, are kind of uh, clean cut, but some of us, you know, are tatted up and got piercings everywhere. And uh, that's all right, because that's, that's, that's my family. And, you know, some of us, uh, you know, look a little more polished and some of us are kind of rough around the edges. But, you know, that's my, my family. Well. You know, when the Compton crew kind of came through, they came through like, like Compton, right? And so some of the waitresses started to, to be a little funny acting with us and, and treating us like, you know, we didn't pay our money to come in there. In fact, we couldn't get anybody to fill up our water glasses or refresh our orange juice or take the dirty plates uh, out. And they seemed to be waiting on everybody except us. And we started talking about it among our family. My family's like, well, wait a minute, no, don't make us roll up on you. know, I can't say all the words that some of my Compton cousins say but you know how, how we do and so I decided no 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 let, let me handle it they were like oh preacher you 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 not the one I said no let let me handle it so I go to the woman I approach her I said listen here ma'am uh, uh, I'm feeling some kind of way you know my family is here and uh, nobody is bringing us uh, water we've got dirty plates uh, stacked up and, and she started coming back at me like well, I, I, I'm not even sure all y'all paid to get in here. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on now, now. Wait a minute. Don't make me call little Mama over here because little Mama, you know, you don't want to deal with him, right? And she said, well, uh, uh, you, we, we just busy. We got a lot, lot to do. Has everybody, has everybody paid? And she started making all these, uh, you know, undercut uh, accusations. And, and I said, hey, here's what's going to happen. You're going to send somebody over there and you're going to remove all the dirty plates. You're going to have some people refresh our water. When my glass gets half full, I want it to be filled up immediately. Do you understand me? The kids like orange juice. They're out of orange juice. I want every child over there has to have some orange juice. We paid that $35 or $45, and I expect that to happen. Do you understand what I'm talking about today? She's I'm backing up. I said, no, I'm not playing now. Uh, you, you see us over there. You see how we roll. We roll deep. She got all quiet and went back to talk to her people and then within five minutes baby we had to, all the plates cleaned they, they were washing down ma'am can I get you something else would you like some little juice did she want to ask my 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 do you need apple juice or, or orange juice she was taking care of us like we were royalty well my little cousins they were sitting there and they looked at me my nieces actually um, the ones who still in Compton one of them leaned over and said uncle I didn't know you still had no gangster in you. <laughs> so they were all laughing, saying, Uncle, little old OG. And I got all proud, like, girl, you know I'm straight out of Compton. I might be in the pulpit, but I, I know how to make my way in these streets. And they were, you know, bragging and giving me all kind of dap, dapping me up. I was feeling real strong about that time. And then we finished our meal. And, and then uh, as the Holy Spirit does, the Holy Spirit starts speaking to me. The Holy Spirit said to me, Ray, 
you're not here for this woman to serve you today you're actually here on assignment to serve her I was like God she was nasty she was me she was disrespectful to my mind them yeah but you know something about the love of God and I felt so convicted I was trying to walk out there with my shoulders up and uh, wanting to uh, be the big man and the, uh, like pseudo OG that my nieces and nephews uh, were thinking I was and the Holy Spirit said no that's not why you're here and I felt compelled after everybody left I went back into the restaurant and I asked for this lady I asked the manager I said the lady who served us Sherry Shelley something I don't know her name can I talk to her they went to get her and I saw her walking toward me and she was clearly scared she thought I was coming to tell on her or jack her up some more and she was nervous and uh, kind of looking down I said ma'am I'm here to apologize I shouldn't have spoken to you the way that I did I think it's right that you were not treating my family with the kindness they deserve but I didn't treat you with the kindness that you need so I want to bless you I had two $100 bills in my pocket turned it over to her and I said thank you for your service all of a sudden the lady looked at two $100 bills and just tears started flowing from her eyes lordly and she just began to just unload on me she said oh, I'm so sorry I really didn't mean to be mean I got so much going on in my life I got three kids and their daddy is nowhere to be found I sometimes can't get good shoes for my kids to wear to school sometimes my kids go hungry when I'm sitting here passing out plates and plates of food that some people throw away and I'm sorry I did what I did thank you sir I walked away from her but before I did I gave her a hug as back when you still could give hugs and I said, God loves you, and I love you too. And in that moment, in that moment, church, I realized the transformational power of kindness. I realized that we can change the hearts of people with a heart of stone, Brother Mert, if we will initiate the kindness that this text is talking about I realized that God sent me there not to be served by that waitress but to serve her with the loving kindness of God that would transform her life but on some level on some level I think you already know this you know from your own experience that the loving kindness of God can change your worst day into your best day. You know from your own experience that the kindness of God can turn a sinner into a saint. You know from your own experience that if it had not been for the kindness of God, you would have been dead and sleeping in your grave. I need some honest saints today to stand up and help me praise them. Help me praise God because you know from your own life, had it not been for the kindness of God, you would not have made it this far. If it had not been for the kindness of God, you wouldn't have the job that you have. If it had not been for the kindness of God, you never would have graduated from college. If it had not been for the kindness of God, you wouldn't have been able to put those kids through school. If it had not been for the kindness of God, you would have lost your mind by now. If the Lord has been good to you, if the Lord keeps on blessing you, if the Lord makes ways for you, then you ought to
killed you if it had not been for the kindness of God diabetes would have beat you up by now if it had not been for the kindness of God somebody say I never would have made it never would have made it as a single parent never would have made it out of college if it had not been for the kindness of God love is kind because God is love I challenge you to be love be kind this is the word of God and it's for you the people of God come on let the whole church say amen if I can help somebody as I pass along if I can cheer somebody with the word a song if I can show somebody that he's traveling traveling wrong then my living shall not be be in vain if I can help somebody as I pass along if I can cheer somebody with the word a song if I can show somebody yeah, that he's traveling yeah traveling wrong then my living shall not be be in vain we don't want our living to be in vain so we take seriously God's word when God tells us to love and that love is kind here's your homework for the week I want you to find one person who needs a kind act but a person who doesn't deserve it maybe even a person you don't like and you show that person the kind of kindness that love requires do that this week and then make it a habit another habit that we ought to nurture in our lives and perpetuate is the habit of giving and we don't give out of necessity we don't give begrudgingly we give cheerfully we give cheerfully because God's loving kindness has been very real in our lives and so we take a portion of what God allows us to steward to have and give that back to God through this ministry so before you you'll find on the screen the various platforms by which, by which you can give we invite you even now to give from that place of love that kindness represents I hope you've had an amazing Sunday and a great week go forth and be love be kind I pray that the kind loving spirit of our great God will rest rule and abide with you today and forevermore come on church let me hear you say it say amen <laughs>